Well, let's have some fun with this one, okay? We're going to talk about sex and van life. Woo! <laughs> well, I had a question. Let me go ahead and read it, okay? It is from, first time getting a question like this. It's from Tony Santoso. The other day, I went to the beach with my partner, and we saw a rocking car, which strangely made me ask myself. I didn't mean to be inappropriate, but a question popped up in my mind. Cool. I hope you don't mind answering. Absolutely not. We're all adults, right? Of course we are. Where do nomads have sex? <laughs> okay. Where do nomads have sex? Do they do it in their vehicles? Do they do it in their vehicles? Or do they stay in a hotel to make love? When I asked that question, my partner laughed and answered that it would cost a lot to make love when I decided to start my van life. <laughs> you are at your discretion not to answer this question, but it's been eating me ever since. Once again, he's got a lot of uh, uh, laughing emojis. Once again, I did not mean to be de indecent. It was just out of curiosity for people who are still sexually active. This could be a consideration. Thanks, Lee and Paul. Well, you know, a lot of people are sexually active. I did have, uh, when I mentioned, when we, Paul and I stayed in a, in a, a hotel, and I had mentioned that, you know, there was no hanky-panky going on, because I'm a Christian, and so is Paul. Um, but we do love each other a lot. And one lady mentioned, she goes, oh, how can you even think about that? Um, you know, at your age, at my age, <laughs> I'm 70, Paul is 75. I mean, you know what? I People are doing it all the way up <laughs> to like maybe if they're living to be 95. Of course, actually, um, people can actually become more sexually sensitive as they get older. And I know that is really true for a lot of the women. Yeah, because as we got older, we're not so tense as, you know, or embarrassed or whatever. Yeah. So uh, for anybody to think at, at a certain age, I don't, I don't think um, that there's a cutoff age. I really don't. It really, I think it depends on your health. I really do. Well, let's get into this discussion. Uh, look at me. Where am I? I'm in a hotel, a really nice one too. It's a nice hotel. It's not even expensive, but this particular hotel that I'm staying at, um, I stayed at once before and it is really superior in all respects. I really enjoy it. I've had my bath. I've had my shower. Then I got in the shower and I washed my hair, uh, put some repair on my hair, really did, did my nails, did my toenails. <laughs> oh, you know, did a little bit too much information. And I was watching a movie on AMC, Grand Torino. Remember that movie, everybody, with um, Clint Eastwood? It's a good movie. But I wanted to talk to y'all, so I turned it off for now. Trying to get the lighting okay in here. If I turn this one on, oh, well, it's not so bad, I guess. <laughs> with this one. I've been using I've been um my 14 Pro Max is having some light issues. I'm not really sure why. I've got to do more research on that camera. But right now I'm using my 12 and it seems to be pretty good with the lighting. With the coffee machine that is over here, I went ahead and I just made some tea. I brought some tea bags in, so here's some tea. Do you want some? You can have some too. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Okay, so sex in a van. I don't know if anybody's ever really addressed this in van life. I've known couples, married couples, that they built out this one couple. I remember they built out their um, the Pro Master Ram. They had one like Paul's. And they took the time. They had it completely built out really professionally with cabinets and the bed and everything. And they were married. Well, of course they're going to have sex. And they weren't that old. They were probably in their late 40s, early 50s. And yeah, of course they're going to have sex. Now, I know that there are couples, they, they couple up in the nomad life. 
And I'm going to guess that if they're in a minivan, that's going to be a little difficult in a minivan. But if they have a regular RV or a, a, um, a pro master, a high top, I mean, it's going to be real easy. And, um, yeah, it probably will rock a little bit, but here's some answers I found. <laughs> I found this question on Reddit, Reddit. So let me get to this. Let's see. We'll find this. Here we go. Okay. Here was the question on Reddit. Sex in the van? How? It says. Hello. I do not post often, but I'm strongly considering van life within the next year. I do have a significant other of three years that will be joining me in this grand endeavor. It is a grand endeavor, isn't it? Endeavor, not endeavor, endeavor. Besides the support, trust, honesty, and respect that our relationship radiates, sex is also one of the grand aspects about it. So my question is, as van dwellers, does the van rock a noticeable amount during sexy fun times? Ooh, sexy fun times. As an urban van dweller in the city, there are so many of us, aren't there? I'm almost guessing that there's half and half now. There are half people that stay in the city and, and nestle in uh, urban nestlers or they're uh, boondockers. Okay. As an urban van dweller in the city, where should we park to commence in van sexy fun times? <laughs> and also, what are your personal experiences, tips, and advice with sex and van life, van living? I posted this because I could not find any post specifically regarding this question that I have. Thank you so much in advance. Yeah, I mean, if you're younger, you're, those are going to be questions, you know, is is it going to be really noticeable in a van when you're when you're um, having intercourse? <laughs> because there's all kinds of sexy fun fun, right? You know, there's actual intercourse and there's just playtime, foreplay, blah blah blah. We're all adults, right? So um, let's see, what do I have here? I I I copy pasted some actual uh, answers. One says, I don't remember if my 67 Dodge van rocked, but I was kind of off busy at the time. <laughs> he doesn't remember. Um, you would have to do some heavy duty humping to make a three fourths or one ton rock. I would be more concerned about how loud your lover is. Would not be good to have a screamer in the back of a van. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's another one. Not only will the van be rocking and rolling, but everybody around it will hear everything that's going on. When you're done, your neighbors will need a cigarette too. <laughs> I know, this is kind of fun, isn't it? Okay, and then it says, with vigorous hanky-panky, the van sways a bit, but it's sturdy enough to not be an issue. Okay. Well, here's one. Van, okay. Van will sway a bit, depending on how animalistic you get. <laughs> Remember that there's always the possibility of a knock if someone becomes concerned, if there's like screaming going on back there, right? I'd say park somewhere more private as probably not on the street in a residential neighborhood. Also know your surroundings. So if you are a screamer, a secluded wooded area will probably be a better fit or tell her she's got to shut up for certain sessions. <laughs> but humans, ooh, F-U-C-K, everywhere. So you'll be just fine, okay. That's reassurance, isn't it, everybody? Okay, here's another one. Well, we're only ever parked in, well, we're, we've only ever parked in well-lit parking lots, like grocery stores or gyms, rendering a lot of movement 
too obvious. The best nights for us are rainy ones. Oh, see, that's good advice. The noise and rain itself makes people outside worry less about listening in on a random rocking van in the parking lot. LOL. Here's another one. The van will shake a lot less if your bodies are positioned the long way. Okay. Here's a more, it says more detailed answer from somebody else. You can definitely get hydraulic leveling systems in a transit, but it will not be cheap. Depending on how much you're planning to build out the van overall, I guess. If your plan is a mattress in the back, spending thousands on hydraulic leveling may sting. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Those are some answers that I've, they actually did discuss it a little bit on, on the, um, the web. Now, where was the other one that, where was this other one that I had? Okay. So I also found a article about dating and van life. And the consensus is, is that I think it's on Tyndall or Tinder or Tyndall. It's a dating site. I forget what it's called because I, yeah, I thought it was Tyndall, it's probably Tinder. Anyways, um, they said more and more people are actually in their profiles. They're listing that they're, they live in their van. Well, they cited one story of this woman who she lived in her van and a professor, she didn't list it that she was a nomad, but she was uh, this male professor um, answered it and they went out in a mutual well-lit place, a restaurant. And she was really nervous about telling them that she lived in a van. Well, as it turned out, um, you know, he really didn't want to date her anymore. And a lot of people say that as van dwellers, they're having a hard time um, dating anybody who's not a van dweller. And I found this conclusion to be interesting. It said dating issues for nomads is really the issues and the problems is that as a society, we connect having a house with stability and security. In general, a person looks for security and security is tied to being in one place, being able to be a provider. Well, I guess that'd be for the males adding that even though he sees himself as stable, this is a nomad, his states don't often share the same opinion. Yeah. So a lot of males have a hard time finding a gal. And I would imagine um, that as far as males wanting to date a female who's a nomad, they might get the impression that they only want to date him so that they can get out of the van and move in with him. And that might... Um, scare him off because he really doesn't want any commitment. He doesn't really know her and he doesn't want to get to know her and take the time to do it. A lot of people say, well, why, if, if, why are you dating anybody that you would never marry? Why are you wasting your time doing that? And I think a lot of people have that issue on their mind. Like, well, don't date anybody that you wouldn't marry because you could fall in love with them. Right? So basically that's probably a lot of the male thinking, well, I don't want to date uh, if they live in a house, I don't want to d date a female, a van dweller, because she just wants to use me to get into my house. And a male and a female, it's going to be looking for, well, why would I want to date this person? They're not much of a provider. But I bet in some instances, the, the female might look at it like, wow, this looks like an adventure maybe I'll get one too. And if they fall in love, so that can happen too. I mean, it isn't just all females like, Oh, I want a provider. They might want to be able to go with somebody who it looks like an adventure. Like, let's go. Remember in the old sixties, like hop in my, hop in my VW bus. Let's drive to San Francisco. And the girls hop in and they go, <laughs> you know? So if you're an adventurous person and yeah, you have wanderlust. Yeah. That might be, might be a case. But as far as having sex in your van, I would imagine you want to have enough space. Okay, so who are the couples that I know that are together, that were together or are together, and that they're having 
um, that they're, they're romantic in a sexual relationship. Zero. I don't. I know couples, and but I don't know everybody, so I'm sure they're out there, right? Or if they met somebody. Well, that's not entirely true. I do know of two other, I can think of them, two other couples that are very romantic. They're nomads. They met. And they're, I don't know if they're still together, but I would imagine if they're romantic that, uh-huh, they're visiting each other's vans. I don't know, but I would imagine, yeah. So it's possible out there to meet somebody and just like, oh, I love you. You grow in love with you. And of course they want to, um, even if they don't want to get married, you know, not everybody is, you know, has the same principles or issues. My per my thing is, if you think it's a sin for you, then it probably is, right? But if somebody says, well, you know, I feel like it's a go. I mean, I love this person. I'm committed to this person and it's okay. So yeah, it'd probably be okay. It's really an individual thing and there's no judgments on anybody. The only judgments that I have are really on myself and what I feel like the um, God wants me to do, okay? Now that I've said that. So yeah, I mean, if you two people meet and they want to and they want to um, have a more intimate relationship, or they want to share their the joy of sex, you know, they want to enjoy their bodies together. Shoot, I mean, yeah, they're going to go in each other's vans. They're going to visit. Um, my minivan is pretty small, so yeah, it it, it wouldn't be a, a real comfortable situation. So. But another RV site that said, well, of course, if you got RVs, I mean, an RV is not going to really rock. A, a, like a Class A? No. They're, they're so big. They're like a bus. And yeah, and there's a lot of married couples that are having sex, right? In their vans. And like, I'm going to reiterate this. It doesn't matter your age. In fact, I think uh, I've heard of seniors. There's a whole lot of female single seniors, more than males, right? Although I do think that's kind of calming down. I think men are living a lot longer, so it's not such a, a high difference in ratio. But still, I do think that there are older, more older women than senior women than men. Okay. I've heard there's like a whole, there's a whole lot of bumping and grinding going on in these senior centers or these senior, um, you know, uh, communities. You know, a guy, he could have like three or four women. And I've heard that it does happen. So I, you know, yeah, I don't know. And I've heard that STDs are kind of growing among the older population when you're dealing with that situation. So I don't know. Well, I hope you are, are enjoying this. Let's see, what else can we discuss on this issue? Um, I don't know, you know, like, what do you think? Should, should even as older people, should they be using condoms? What do you think about, I mean, that's an issue, right? Right. I mean, we know they can't get pregnant, okay, older seniors, but let me also mention that not all nomads are seniors, just a whole bunch of us, right? A little bit more, I think, percentage, but there are a lot of young people out there that are gonna meet people or they're traveling like this fella, on the same question, he has said he's going to be traveling with his um, girlfriend. And he wants to have sexy fun time. <laughs> I know, I know. I love it. Thank you for that question. You know, I think, uh, so put your put your comments in there. They can be funny or whatever. Um, but please don't um, be um, critical that I touched on this. Like, oh, you're too old for that or whatever. Because I know I might get at least one. But just... Step back. Don't do it. Okay, just don't do it. Okay. Um, I had some more questions here that were fun. Let me see. I can get a couple more questions in. Let's do it. Let's do it. What is this? I would love to save $10,000, but I can't have over 2000 this is from um, Melissa Johnson. Hey, Melissa, I understand where you're coming from. And so what I'm getting, I'm going to assume from this that you're getting some sort of assistance. 
Well, you have to weigh out. Are you making money? Can you make more money? And can you make more by working than what you're getting in an assistance program? Because sometimes these assistance programs can really hold people back. They can hold them back and it's like, well, I don't want to lose that. So I can't really. Um, and, and, and if you're saving, well, what if that means, does that mean you can't make any money either? Because if you were making money, I mean, couldn't you just stash away some cash? I don't know, you know? So yeah, don't let this assistance program, whatever the assistance is, whether it's food stamps or disability or whatever, or welfare or whatever. Look, don't let that hold you back because if you can go out and you can work and you're gonna shoot yourself forward with more experience, more money, more satisfaction in life, and et cetera, et cetera. I say go for the work and start saving some money. Screw the assistance sometimes, right? Okay, lovely. This is another one from Jenny. Pena, okay, sorry. Pena, Gio, Tito, okay. Lovely coyote visiting you. If you didn't see my last video at the very end or if you didn't watch it all the way to the end. So really great um, coyote that I got him. He was coming into our camp from last year. Hey, listen, it said it was very lovely. He was lovely. And another person commented on it too that because he was like a, like a, like a canine, after they go to the bathroom, they, they like push their feet back to cover it up, I guess. Abby does it all the time. Although she turns around, she's not even getting it. Okay. <laughs> but um, the the reason that Coyote came into the camp, he was looking for Abby. The whole system of them coming to our camp was because of Abby. And Abby wasn't there. Paul had left at that point and I was in my van. And all of a sudden I looked out my window and there's a Coyote walking around, right? So I went out there and I started filming him. He was fine. I didn't, I wasn't afraid of the coyote whatsoever. But I was just, and he was looking at me. It was like this encounter. He was looking at me. I was looking at him. He was walking slowly. Um, and I kind of made some noises at him. But what he did was he urinated and then pushed it around. He wanted to give it, put his scent out in our camp. And he was looking for Abby. I've heard that what happens is, is they will steal dogs. If it's a real little dog, they'll eat it, right? They'll take it back and eat it and share it with the others. But Abby's a big dog like they are. So what they'll do is they'll steal it and make it, I've heard read this, they'll make it part of the pack. I don't know, they're gonna make her like a sex slave. Oh, well, here we go, sex again. <laughs> I always said, they're gonna make a sex slave out of her. Oh my God, you know? <laughs> No, I don't know. I'm kidding, really. But it's like, oh, my God, they can't take Abby. That's one of the reasons we always had her on a leash. And then at a certain point at night, we, um, Paul always, I said, we. Abby is Paul's dog, by the way, just in case you didn't know it. Abby belongs to Paul. And Paul has had her for quite a while. I believe she's like 9, 10 years old. He's had her ever since she was a pup. And it's his dog. He makes all the decisions on Abby. I don't. And, um, but he would take her in, um, when it's, as soon as it started, the, the sun went down just a little bit, just to protect her. Cause the coyotes want to come and, um, investigate and they want Abby. They don't want humans. Now, one time we were in Quartzsite and there was a coyote. We, um, we, we were with, we went to Silly Al's Pizza. It's a famous place in Quartzsite. And, um, Paul and Glenna and I went in Paul's a van and when we came back there was a coyote eating Abby's food he forgot to put Abby's food you know out or put it in the van before we left and he the, he we stopped and we watched it and then it slowly like walked away so that was pretty cool another thing about coyotes my experience with coyotes is in Tucson I lived near the U of A really nice area and before the coyotes came, we had a lot of quail, a lot of bunnies, just cats running around. Yeah, it was, a, it was yeah, lots of um, wildlife. 
in that area. But then coyotes start coming in and um, the quail, they start eating everything. And they uh, people had to really fence in well their um, chickens. You could have chickens in the, in the neighborhood. A lot of people had chickens, they're really nice homes, but they had chickens with the, they had, in Tucson, everybody has walls. <laughs> they don't just have fences, they have these big walls, six, eight foot walls, right? Well, um, a coyote can jump a really high wall and they were getting the chickens. So they were, and they would um, hunt down little dogs too that were left in the backyard. But my personal experience with these is it, the population kept growing. And in Arizona, coyotes and javelinas are a protected species. So it's against the law to shoot them. You have to live with them if they come in the, in the city. And Neobe is right in the center of the city. So, and the population kept growing. Well, I would take a walk every morning and I would, it, it never failed. I don't know if it's the same one, I doubt it. But a coyote would follow me. Didn't want to hurt me. I don't know why. They just wanted to follow me. And I would walk and I'd turn down and I'd turn around. And they would be like a good, I don't know how many feet away. A good 20, 30 feet behind me. But it would walk and I would turn around. Everyone, I just wanted to test it. And I'd turn around and go like that. And it would go. <laughs> and then I would turn around and walk. And then it'd start walking. It had good manners. <laughs> it didn't try to hurt me. It was just walking. I probably it was trying to see if I would lead it to food or I'm sure it was sinking food. Usually coyotes, animals like that, food. Now, this year, the first year at Reed Park in Tucson, Paul saw, I did not see it, but there were, um, during the day, there were coyotes. It was like mating season and spring. They were coming right into the park and walking right through the park, a coyote. Oh yeah. And nobody was afraid of it. Coyotes don't want to attack people. I suppose if you were, if they were really starving and the whole pack and you were a person and they were, they had nothing else to eat, I'm sure they would surround you and go for it. But other than that, I don't think they do. Okay. So we got sex and coyotes, right? And then again, I mentioned coyotes in the spring. They're looking for sex, right? <laughs> spring, spring love, you know, April, April love, right? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you. I love you guys a lot. And I hope, you know, I just really, I like to make these kind of fun. So please subscribe for more fun, right? And hit that bell for notifications. Um, and I've got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Lee Way. And... What else? Oh, go to minivanlee.com. I've got, oops, my neck gaiters are there. I do have neck gaiters and they're really great for the summer. And I've got exercise videos. So, and if you want to give me a gift, not begging, but some of you like to, I do get gifts every once in a while. Uh, thank you, Kathy, so much. You're always right on, right on with uh, giving and just sharing. You enjoy my videos and we're good friends and you like to just share that I do have different amounts. If you'd like to give me a gift, maybe for my travels, for whatever, for editing and things like that. Now, YouTubers don't always make a lot of money, especially small ones. So if you want to do that, but you know what? You don't have to, but I just want to mention it was there. Bye everybody till tomorrow. Love you.